amis mademoiselle et ça c'est deuxième channel moi et jodi à nous allons parler de haïti we're going to be talking about the current state of haiti yet again but more on a personal note if you guys did not watch my previous video on what's going on in haiti i suggest you guys watch that first this video was supposed to be part of that video but that video got insanely long and it was emotionally draining for me like i don't know if you guys could tell but I, my energy was off i was tired hopefully my editor was able to edit that in a way that y'all couldn't tell but like i I couldn't like I was very very emotionally drained after that but I really hope that anyone that has any loved ones in Haiti right now is able to contact them anyone who has lost someone in Haiti right now is able to somehow some way get some peace from that and any of the journalists who are actually reporting on what is going on in Haiti accurately are getting their praise and the recognition that they deserve because all of that is insanely important I am so sorry for those of you guys who did lose someone because that is like very very heartbreaking I have lost a couple people as well some of my family members have died because of all of the madness that is going on in Haiti and that is what prompted me to make that video and what is prompting me to make this video even though I do not like to make these types of videos on my channel because I like this video to be a positive place I do feel like it is important to talk about these topics because as Haitian Americans it is our duty to inform people of what is going on in our country and to stay a little bit up to day at least somewhat of what is going on so with that being said make sure you guys go watch that video like i said but of course if you've never seen me before smash that like button smash that subscribe button smash everybody you know that can help her sister out if this video is not your type of video because it is gonna get a little you know sad not as sad as the other one but it is kind of sad we're gonna be talking about really sad situations make sure you guys check out the other videos in the catalog i will see you next time so like I said we're gonna be talking on a more personal note and what basically prompted me to make my previous video so my mother had been telling me for a while that like a lot of my family members had been dying because kidnappers had entered the area that my parents are from so my mother is from Susmatla and my dad is from Kabare which is practically the same place right however what a lot of people do not understand is when it comes to a lot of the violence that a lot of people see that happens in Haiti it's not all of Haiti it never is all of Haiti it's always the capital it's always the ville it's always like those very very hot spots in haiti and always the south of haiti my parents are more so from the west of haiti none of this stuff is in the east none of it is in the north none of it is in the west it's always in the south it's always in the capital close to the airport type area it's absolutely never anywhere else all of those riots the fires the violence the fighting all of it always in Port-au-Prince kid you not ask any Haitian even Haitian Americans know this everybody knows that hence why sometimes you'll see people living their best life in Haiti and most of the time when you see CNN Fox ABC or whatever you'll be like how are people flying to Haiti all the time and nothing's wrong with that but then when CNN's reporting it looks like it's the most dangerous place to be that's because they're reporting one side narratives hence why when I've done my unpopular opinions I'd be like Haiti is doing absolutely nothing that it's never done before they're just reporting bullshit however what's going on now is completely different from what we've ever seen kidnappers gangs or whatever are popping up at an alarming rate there is now over 200 gangs in Haiti right now and the kidnappers have spread all over the country they're not as bad as of yet but in the West they have taken over so my mother was sitting here telling me stories here and there yeah they killed this cousin they killed this uncle they killed this aunt they killed and I'm like how is this fucking possible since when do kidnappers come to this area and she's like yo to be honest like yeah everybody is terrified the village is scared la quasho you know the village is hot or whatever like everybody is terrified because like nobody's ever seen this level of violence where we're from that is the type of stuff that they do in port-au-prince and now since they done tore port-au-prince up they move in everywhere else like they're mobilizing and i was like okay this is very strange but i didn't entirely believe her until my aunt was supposed to come to the state now my aunt is the mother of my cousin that lives with my parents now if you guys follow my third channel which is my personal channel I've talked about my cousin at length on that channel right I don't really like the man but I don't hate the man like we just kind of started getting cool but he's lived with my parents for quite some time like he's been there for at least like let me see I, he moved in after I graduated college so it had to be like maybe 2017 ish now we're in 2020 no 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 there's no way if I 
I graduated 2017, it's only 2022, maybe it's been five years? I don't know, I feel like it's been longer. I'm not really sure who's counting. But anyway, he moved in, Um, he's like literally 40. He moved in with my parents and I when I lived there and he still lives there. Personally, I think that's ridiculous. Like how are you married and 40 and you live with my parents? You need to get your life together. But hey, that's for a whole nother video for a whole nother time on a whole nother channel. But anyhow, he has a mom who is my aunt, AKA my mother's sister that comes to America every year or so because she has a visa. She was supposed to be here in May. That's usually when she comes around the summer because you know Haitians, you're pef huidi, okay? She's afraid of the cold. Therefore, that's why she's usually here. Now, when May hit, she wasn't here. June hit, she wasn't here. July hit, she wasn't here. I was thoroughly perplexed. And what's even weirder is this is the time when her son was hitting me up, talking about some, yeah, I'm getting married. And the wedding was also prolonged. He didn't get married till fucking August, which was around his birthday. So like, it was a lot of weird stuff going on. Come to find he was ignoring his mother's phone calls. His mother's out here crying in Haiti. Let me do this, who's this, who's it? I already talked about this on my third channel. Like y'all, if y'all want tea on my Haitian family and the drama that be happening for real, for real, go subscribe to my personal channel, all right? It's always linked down below, okay? And if you more, I'll subscribe, okay? I'll abonne. Go subscribe there because I already talked about this. But long story short, he was ignoring her phone calls. She's sitting here, she crying. I don't know, I don't know if I told that story. I have to go look back and see if I told that story. But that was a mess, okay? So I had to call, like, and the thing is with me, I'm the type of person, I'm not about to sit there and do he said, she said. And also, she's my favorite aunt. And that's another thing. If you guys been on this channel or you subscribe on that channel, I don't like many people. And when it comes to my family, I don't tolerate their bullshit because they're all very messy. They're very disrespectful. And a lot of them have not treated me properly. But her, I actually genuinely like her. I love her to death. She's my favorite aunt. So one, I don't want to hear about her crying. And two, you're not about to sit here and make it seem like she crazy or she doing something that she didn't do or she not doing something that she did do or whatever the case may be. So at this point, it's just a whole bunch of power. First of all, my mother does not like my cousin. They do not speak. They haven't spoken in years. Meanwhile, they live in the same house. Is that crazy? Yes, but we're Haitian. Nothing's crazy in a Haitian household. So my mother, Lishita Lap by Powell, okay? She's sitting here, she's talking shit, talking about, oh yeah, your cousin sitting here not talking to his mother, not answering her phone calls and she trying to come here. That's why she not here. Don't you see it's July? And, you, and your aunt's still not here. And then you got people in Haiti talking shit about him too. So I do what I do best. Investigation, okay? I did an investigation. I said, hey, yo, everybody's talking shit about you. I went to my cousin. I said, everybody's talking shit about you. And they're saying that you're not answering your mother's phone calls. So he gets mad and we call Haiti. Ring, ring, ring. Sac passe. She's like, oh, I probably was calling your wrong number because my cousin did change his phone number recently because his girlfriend was out here tapping his phone and was able to find out who the hell he was texting and calling via WhatsApp. Listen, this is a long story. Like that part, that's a whole other story. But basically his girlfriend was able to tap his phone. So he changed his phone number and she was still able to tap his phone. But basically his mother was calling the wrong phone number. I guess she still had the old phone number saved and didn't realize it. So while she was sitting there like, oh, he's not answering my phone calls, she was calling the wrong phone. But that makes no sense because there's so many other family members that were talking to him and calling him and they were reaching the right number, but she's a little slow. I ain't even gonna stunt. So long story short, we resolved it. So while we were on the phone, I was like, hey, do you still want to come to America? I have no problem paying the ticket. I really want to see you. It's been too long. What's well, good? She was like, oh yeah, you know, I still want to come. Da, 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 da. Now that's the thing about this aunt. She a mashon. Okay. I'm not gonna tell y'all who she is because a lot of people in Haiti know she who she is. She's like very, very if anybody watching this is from Kabare, they'll know who she is. She's very, very known. She's very, very like well known for being a mashon in the area. I'm not gonna tell y'all what she sell, but she she's known for selling things. She's she's a hustler. Okay, she 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 sells, and that's all she cares about is selling. Okay, so she the type of person if a really big holiday is coming up, if a really big event is coming up, oh I can't come at this time because there's this event and I gotta make my money. If that I gotta make my money to the point where she didn't even raise any of her kids. Her kids were dumb on my mother. Hence why my cousin is like that. My my mother raised my cousin and she was a kid herself you know so it's like it's a lot of crazy things going on and it's just like listen if I buy you this ticket are you actually gonna come do you have any events going on because I, I don't got time this is not my mother's money this is not your son's money this is my money and I don't play about my money I will literally curse you out I want to know if you're really coming she said yes I'm going to come so I bought the ticket I believe in like the end of August or beginning of September everything's all fine 
bought the ticket for the end of October. All of a sudden, my sister, not my sister that I cut off, my theoretical sister. This is another child that she passed off to my mother that isn't her child, but my mother technically adopted her in Haiti as her own child because at one point my mother thought that she couldn't have kids. I'm my mother's miracle child, so I consider her a sister, but not really. I just respectfully call her a sister because everyone tells me to. But anyways, my sister in Haiti hits me up talking about some, oh, my aunt doesn't want to come anymore because it's getting cold in America. Excuse me? Let me just tell y'all, my aunt has been consistently coming here for the past three or four years. There was one time she was here literally November to like January and it was legitimately cold. We went on a whole church retreat and she was out in the cold standing for hours. Man, we'll get you a couple of jackets. We'll get you some thermals. What the fuck is you talking about? Like, I was like, what are you? You knew when the fuck we was gonna buy you that ticket. Not only that, in New Jersey, it's been unusually warm, y'all. We've had 80, 70, 60 degree weather days. And don't even say, oh, well, you know, that's cold for Haitians. No, y'all, I've been able to wear booty shorts. I literally just did a whole reel the other day in booty shorts. Like, literally, it's comfortable ass weather outside lately. Like, literally, today was the first cold day. To, and, and it wasn't even that cold. It's not even jacket cold. It's like hoodie and legging cold. Not even the fleece kind. So, I'm back up on Kisa Wabdim. So, so Wabdim la. What are you saying, man? So, I'm like, what is this? What is this? So, I call my mother immediately. Immediately. Because all I'm thinking as a Capricorn is my lajon, my money, my money, okay? Because COVID is slowly fading away. A lot of these airlines are not that lenient with these cancellations no more so i said um hey yo what's your sister talking about I'm back on there, but I'll keep it. Yo. Oh, I don't know. Don't, don't, don't pay them no mind. You know how they be. They be acting up. They just saying bullshit. You know how she is. She mad flaky. I said, listen, I don't care about her being flaky. I don't care about what you're talking about right now. Handle your family. So at this point, I'm getting really upset. I'm getting really mad. I'm talking to my cousins. I'm like, yo, this shit's starting to get me mad, bro. Like, what the? F I'm like, bro. They told me not to do this shit. They told me not to do this shit. This is why I'm not nice to niggas. This is why I'm not nice to niggas. Now I hit up her son, which is my cousin that lives with my parents, and I'm like, hey, yo, what is going on? What's the deal? Oh. Apparently, the real reason is she's scared because there are wording people at the airport. I said, there are what? She said, yeah, there are wording people at the airport. On all the routes to the airport, no one can pass. Like, literally. They don't care if you are young, old, male, or female. They are R wording people and on the routes to the airport. Kunyam, I I'm shook. I'm shook. I said, I don't believe this shit. Because I'm like, this sounds embellished. <laughs> like, I was like, this sounds ridiculous. This sounds embellished. I don't believe it. I was like, okay, like, I understand that this lady's flaky and I understand she likes to make her sales. And, you know, I get it. Like, money's money. But, like, I, <laughs> I paid for this ticket <laughs> with bags. Two check bags. What? Let me get this straight. How are they? Not even how, but why? How is that possible? So now he sends me voicemails from my aunt, literally from WhatsApp that she sent to him like, yeah, I'm scared. I don't want to go that route. Like if things improve in the next coming weeks, because I think this is like the beginning of October. So she's like, if things improve the next coming weeks, I'll still come. But as of right now, it's a hard no. I'm terrified. There, There's like so many stories of people getting awkward on the way. Da -da -da -da. And I'm like, what? What? So now shit gets real. But at this point, I still don't believe it because I'm like, all right, I don't see any travel advisory. And if that was the case and people really couldn't get to the airport, why aren't they just automatically refunding my ticket? Because usually if like something that serious is happening and people can't get through to the airport, like usually like it's a big thing, it's blowed up everywhere. But I'm like, okay, this, this ain't... The math ain't mavish. So now I'm like, all right, let me just wait and see. Let's see if things improve. Oh my God, shit gets worse. Now I have another cousin that conveniently went to Haiti maybe a couple months prior to all of these dealings. And he's trying to come back to America and he can't get back to America. Cause now they practically keeping all his shit. Okay, they ba they basically took all his bags. They took all his shit and they telling him he can't pass. Okay, they, they, they basically like, yeah, bitch, where the fuck you think you going? And I just like I'm hearing this story and I'm like okay maybe my aunt wasn't like just making this shit up because she don't want to 
cub. All right, and then I'm hearing other stories from other people, other friends from different places in Haiti, and they're like, yeah, my cousin can't come. Yeah, my aunt is stuck too. I had heard the story about a family that literally was about to get R-worded. Thank God they didn't, but instead they just took all their suitcases and eventually let them go off to the airport. So there was like all of these stories of people just being blocked on their way to their airport or blocked like at airports or just getting attacked at airports and I'm just like okay she wasn't um making this shit up this is some real shit so I'm like all right this is this is ridiculous so we're still waiting to see if things are gonna calm down and now people in the family are calling me still thinking like okay maybe she's gonna come so they're like oh make sure you get this for her because you know it might be cold and make sure you do that for her because you know it might be cold and make sure you talk to her about her business because you know there's kidnappers in the area and she refuses to move her business from outside on the outskirts of the town. Kunya, Kunya, moi même pense ma tante moi enragé. Moi pense ma tante moi tête ni pas droite parce que c'est pas même femme là qui chita la relim, la relé en moi parce que li pè kidnappé. At this point I'm thinking my aunt must have lost her mind because is this not the same woman that is afraid of kidnappers and doesn't want to go to the airport because she's afraid of kidnappers but apparently her business is out on the outskirts and she's selling on the outskirts now this is the thing my, like i said my aunt is practically a hustler she sells things right but apparently her storefront is literally on on like the the, the outskirts like like it's not in front of her laku now laku is practically like a really big big plot of land usually like a lot of families houses or whatever lay on this land and my family's had that laku since like i went to haiti when i was like six or seven so i, I know the laku i remember the laku is crazy i have photographic memory like i remember exactly what the laku looked like and i remember when i was there her shit was in front of the laku as soon as you walk you step down a little bit and she had her storefront situation right there but apparently her dumb ass i don't know what she thought she was i don't know if she thought she had an ice cream truck i don't know if she thought that she had a I, I don't know what she thought this was but she sat there and she moved her business like up the street and apparently in this same area that's where the kidnappers are known to roam same lady bitching crying complaining that the kidnappers is gonna r-word her gonna go and, and <laughs> So I said, first of all, at this point, I don't give a fuck. That's what I said. I said, mm, my visit on deal. Keep them in Because I, I, what? I was like, wait, you want me to talk to her? You want me to talk? So what am I going to say to her? Keep them in Because why would she move it? Because like the way her storefront was like set up, it was like built into the lock. Like, it wasn't just like a cart. It wasn't just like a table. It was, it's built in. So it's just like, why is it that she would move it down there? And they're like, oh, she don't want to listen. She don't want to move it. And it's, it's like, she, it's like she built her own situation down there and everything we say to her she don't listen and I said oh is that right well if that's the case just give her a machete and give her a gun so she can defend herself and they're like why are you playing why are you talking shit it's a sweat not do say what I bet say what we're said why do y'all think I'm joking why do you like what do you mean they're talking about why am I joking around why am I making jokes about the situation I'm like what are you talking about why am I making jokes about the situation I'm not joking I'm dead ass listen first of all I don't know since when Haitians became so pussy I don't know since when Haitians lost their fight where's y'all diss Aline and I don't want to hear oh they got machine guns and okay and what the fuck y'all want to do just sit down and die you're gonna like, well, I, I, I need to understand what, what are y'all gonna do though you just want to sit down die bitch cry complain the government's not doing anything for you America is probably not gonna do anything for you either Europe is not gonna do shit for you either and everybody is out here fighting for themselves so fight for yourself too give that woman a machete and a gun to defend herself what y'all want me to do what I'm gonna do catch a flight even if I wanted to catch a flight, my parents would have let me. So at this point, let her defend herself since she don't want to fucking listen then. She has to go to sleep eventually, right? So when she goes to sleep, go, break that shit down, and put it right back where the fuck it belongs. Oh, she'll cry. Since when the fuck y'all care about tears? Like, this is ridiculous. I said, get the fuck off my line. <laughs> I was like, get the fuck off my line. Because the... I don't want to hear this shit anymore. So then the plot thickens. I didn't hear nothing, okay? Obviously she doesn't come on the 28th because things get direly worse. I was at the gym the other day. I taught my Zumba class. Yes, I'm a Zumba instructor. I'm also a dance teacher. And I get a phone call from my mom while I was in class, but I thought maybe it was a mistake or I don't know. So I was like, ugh, I'll call her after class. Bro, I didn't even get to finish arm day. I had to do arm day today. I was very upset about it. But anyways, and she tells me these kidnappers took over my family, Laku. And in the process, they killed two of my cousins. Luckily, my family killed eight kidnappers, but that shit ruined my fucking day. Um, I was just like, 
First of all, once you lose your laku, you're more than likely not getting it back. I remember going to Haiti when I was a kid, going to that laku, and that shit just hurt because it's like, damn, I'm never gonna go back there. I'm never gonna see that laku again. Like, bro, like, I'm never, ever going to, like, eat food there again, take a shower there again, nothing. Like, that shit hurt. Like, apparently, they pulled up in the middle of the night on Friday. Apparently, this this has been going on since Friday. And just surprise ambushed everybody. Shooting guns. I guess two of my cousins was trying to fight back and they got killed finally thank god my family started to fight back and they killed eight kidnappers in the process now i know a lot of people are like how the fuck they kill eight well, listen my family don't fucking play that shit and there's been lots of people out there retaliating against kidnappers too which shout outs to y'all we need to start fighting back because this is not okay it really is not okay luckily they were able to bury my family members very very quickly and for those of you guys who are in haiti for whatever reason or whatever everybody in haiti should know what to do but you have to bury your family members immediately do not let the kidnappers get any hold of your family members because they will burn the bodies and if you're not aware of why they burn the bodies or anything like that it's because if you leave the bodies right and this is this has to do with any murder in haiti or i think it, i'm gonna just keep it to haiti because i don't know if louisiana does the same thing but anyways it has a lot to do with voodoo right so i mentioned in the other video that a lot of these Haitian people are protected by voodoo but not the good kind obviously right so the reason they burn the bodies is so that the victim's family is not able to get revenge on them if someone is murdered and their families go and they find the body they can do a reverse voodoo countermeasure and find who did what to them like literally find who killed them and in turn kill that person or make that person's family suffer whatever the case may be so this is why all the people that they kill they like sit there and they pour gasoline on them burn them so like you can't figure out who they are or whatever the case may be they sometimes they cut their heads off it, it's a lot of crazy shit so my family was able to bury them and they had to retreat to a different family member's house far enough but close enough um i I think they all try to get a lot cool back. I don't fucking know. My family, some of them are real, real crazy and they like that. But some of them, cop on. I ain't gonna stun. Some of them, cop on. While some of them, oh, cop on means punk, by the way. Um, And some of them are real life terrified and traumatized right now. Like I said, right? A lot of, not even most, if not all of these people have not experienced this type of trauma. They do not live in Port-au-Prince. They have not seen these gangs. They have not seen these kidnappers. They, 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 they never experienced this shit not even in 2001 where the shit was like rampant okay the most that they know about kidnapping was the songs that these niggas was coming out with back in the day so all of this kidnapping shit that they knew about was in the news okay they never experienced this level of violence so like they're literally shaking up a lot of them haven't even talked since friday i'm currently filming this right now on wednesday you know so it's like i'm mad speechless i just feel so bad for because i can't do anything i can't send money i can't send a boy I could barely speak to them on the phone because you can't reach them. It's just, it's a lot. It, it really is. And um, what's really strange about this shit is that apparently the gang leader in this area is a child. It is a child that my family family helped bring up and that's the shit that pisses me off the most this is a child um and i mentioned that in my other video okay um these gangs are mobilizing and they also have gangs stationed in different places in haiti this particular area that was ransacked or whatever is being headed by a child gang leader and my family helped raise this damn child and he's out here terrorizing the people that helped raise him every single adult in this community helped raise that child he is literally no older than fucking 16 he's taken over practically every fucking laku in that area apparently in retaliation i've heard that they burnt down his house i was like how the fuck does he have a house i guess they mean his parents house because i'm like he's 16 but it's just like honestly this shit oh man it's exhausting um it, it truly is so for those of you guys if you can contact your families see if they're okay find Find out whatever you can try to stay up to date about what's going on through them because they're the ones that's going through all of that shit because that's the only thing we can do right now this was very very draining but i had to put this video out there i hope that you guys learned something new um i did get a little riled up or whatever <laughs> so i guess i guess you i hope you guys are entertained i don't know if you guys like my hoodie subscribe um get your merchandise and stuff <laughs>
yeah this just telling all of this and thinking about this kind of really made me sad yeah like share subscribe do all that sorry y'all i'm a little off now so i'm gonna see you guys in the next video bye hello guys so quick little update um uh, my favorite aunt actually had a stroke she's fine now um but i just thought that before i post this video i did have to update you guys on this it, it is getting real um luckily um where my parents live at we are able to send money um i did send her some money so that she can go to um therapy and get caught up on her doctor's appointments but again if you haven't checked on your family in haiti please do so it's getting really really reckless um i know there's a lot of people that got real confused about what i said in my other video regarding the kidnapping status saying that you know i said something along the lines of they're not going for civilians of course they're going for civilians but i'm saying in terms of they upped up the ante and they're going for a lot of higher stake people more so um they're going for everyone right they're kidnapping everyone they're attacking everyone so please do not take what i said out of context but more so i want everyone to be careful um everyone is going through a lot over there right now our people are going through a lot right now and it's imperative that we find some sort of solution that not only puts our minds at ease but definitely is going to be beneficial for them because they're the ones that are going through what they're going through they're living in haiti um and to be honest an occupation is in my opinion not going to really help them because it's never helped in the past so